Step number 18 is the narrative. Now you can see we're going to create a schedule baseline narrative. There's only so much that can be um, understood from creating a Microsoft Project schedule. You have to have a narrative associated with it. So using a standard template, uh, we've gone ahead and created a a you know an, a, a standard narrative, giving us the information that is necessary. Now, of course, we start off on the cover sheet, this, the schedule baseline narrative, the narrative for the baseline schedule. That is a schedule that has set the baseline, has done the final review, and has done all steps, you know, essentially 1 through 17. Um, it contains the project narrative, and then you can see the project number would be filled in there. Uh, you do an overview, and usually this is the scope of work given to you within the contract itself, and you say you know what the what is the project in this example here I just I gave a sample of an air handling uh, project uh, replacement so you give a kind of overview so if someone was sitting down to review the schedule they could relatively quickly understand what the project is you identifying who was the author of the schedule um, you know what software you're utilizing uh, what key people are going to be updating and responsible for schedule? You want to identify the constraints, you know, the NP, NT, NTP, Notice to Proceed, and the Contract Completion Date, the CCD, have constraints on them. They have a start date and a finish date, right? Um, we need to identify those. If we have a project that is phased that has constraint dates in it, this is where we would put that information. We want to identify the overall project duration. Um, and we did that in calendar days because that's how, uh, you know, we're given a project based on calendar days. We want to put when we plan to start it and when we plan to finish it. And then we want to give a summary of the critical path along with the logic. We want to go through and say, okay, in a narrative format, this is the way we're going to put the schedule together. Uh, you know, you can look at a schedule, but sometimes not everybody is... Uh, has enough knowledge to kind of read a schedule um, so we want to be able to in a narrative format identify the critical path or the near critical path and what activities fall along with that um, milestones and deliveries a milestone is an activity with zero duration and any deliveries you may have any key deliverables that may occur long lead items and, and procurement strategy we're going to say Okay, what is our going to be our procurement strategy? How are we going to go about it? How are we going to go about the submittal process? Uh, what what are the long lead items that we're going to have inclusive in the schedule? We'd identify that right there in the narrative. The next item is we're going to identify risk factors. What are the risks that we're going to have to deal with? We're going to have to contend with throughout the project that it can affect cost and more importantly time. So. Um, Variance management approach, you know, how do we deal with the fact that things are going to occur? Um, who has the authority to approve different change orders in time? You know, what is the management approach? What's the standard operating procedure? And then we go ahead and give a description of the scope of work. Um, now, I've gone ahead and broke it down by CSI divisions, and I just said CSI division one, we talked about pre-con and general requirements of submittals and we get a narrative format of how we put together the schedule and what's inclusive in each of those sections. Um, we go on to talk about long lead items and temporary construction and then we get to down to the actual division 2 through 33 and we we discuss the individual line items like okay in division 2 demolition what's a summary of the demolition work that is going to occur you know, Division 8 openings. What's the summary of work that's going to occur for openings? So we do that for each individual uh, section. And you can see it's a good overview of what's going to occur. If you can read the schedule, you can kind of do an overview of what should occur. So we go through all the sections and we talk about post construction and what's going to take place. And at the bottom, we uh, indicate overall the project schedule to be. Uh, scheduled has an award date of this date, has a start date of this date, and a completion date of this date, reflecting this many calendar days. Uh, we want to talk about any activities uh, conducted off-site that may not be inclusive within our schedule, and any corrective actions we may have to take um, as a result of comments we get back, say, from the reviewer.
So this establishes a narrative that goes over, um, you know, the scope of work um, that is going to take place uh, so that somebody who's reviewing the schedule can can read the narrative and understand what the schedule is all about briefly. So you can see this eight-page document covers the entire schedule that may be 40 pages long. So a narrative very important for the baseline. Uh, of course, we'll have a narrative associated with the updates, which we'll do at a later time. Uh, but we're just talking about the baseline schedule here. The uh, schedule update narrative is a little bit different, and it goes. It talks about changes occurring, negative float that has occurred. But this is just focusing on the baseline schedule uh, itself, and that pretty much covers the the uh, the narrative portion uh, of the schedule. Thank you.